This is a production of WKNO Memphis. Production funding for Sports Files is made possible in part by the WKNO Production Fund, the WKNO Endowment Fund, and by viewers like you. Thank you. The Memphis Tigers tip off the new college basketball season here at FedEx Forum with Memphis Madness. My guests on Sports Files, Adonis Thomas and Tarek Black. <laughs> Hi everyone and welcome to Sports Files. The Memphis Tigers do indeed begin the new hoop season tonight at FedEx Forum and I'm actually there sitting courtside for Memphis Madness. So how can I be in the WKNO studios at the same time? Well, it's the magic of television. Last season, the Tigers won another Conference USA title, but in the big dance, they made an early exit, dropping their opener to St. Louis. Fast forward to the present. This season, the Tigers will have even loftier expectations from the fans and themselves. They lost leading scorer Will Barton to the NBA, but bring back a talented veteran nucleus and a number of highly regarded newcomers. Josh Pastor has yet to win an NCAA tournament game as Tigers head coach, but most feel it's only a matter of time. And with the move to the ultra-competitive Big East Conference a season away, there's no better time than the present. But first, let me get back into my DeLorean and time travel to the Anthony Penny Hardaway Hall of Fame for my interview with Tarek Black and Adonis Thomas. Tarek, Adonis, thank you so much for being with us. We really appreciate it. Good to see you guys again as we get ready for another season. But let me go back to last season and the way it ended in the tournament against St. Louis. How long did it take you, let me start with you, Tarek, to get over losing to St. Louis in the first round? Um, it took me a couple of days, a couple of days, like two, three days to get over it. Um, but I accept things very well. It's not that um, I'm not an over-emotional guy. Like once it's over, it's over. It's time to start preparing for the next year and the next time you step on the court. So don't have too much time to dwell on the past. Yeah, Don, it's the same thing with you or was it something that you had to think about a lot and well, we did something differently. Maybe we'd win and move on in the tournament. Um, it, was, it was probably more. It was longer for me because of my injury. And um, it, I felt as though I could have contributed more if I was uh, healthy. So it was more for me because we lost and then I had an injury. And, it was a lot of stuff going through my mind at the time because, I mean, an injury that took a toll on my whole entire season, well, half the season. I mean, mm -hmm. starting off from conference play into the um, conference tournament and then through the um, NCAA tournament as well. You were a freshman last year. Tark was a sophomore, and I know there was the talk about possibly being a one and done and moving on to the NBA, and then you had the injury. How close were you to going to the NBA? I mean, um, uh, Coach Pazner and I and my family did some research, and um, I mean, they, we felt that we all felt as though um, I, I could have been drafted in this year's draft. But as far as my draft stock and me not being able to play an entire season, and for NBA scouts to see me and evaluate me, me as a player, um, it was it was minimum because of the season that I had, and they didn't get a chance to really evaluate me. And, uh, coming back for another season is going to um, do a great job for me and uh, also the team because NBA scouts want to see winners. Mm -hmm. Tark, when you look in the Finch Center now, you see the one team, one goal banner. I know Coach Pastner is trying to emphasize that, that it's no individuals. We play as a team. We win as a team. Talk about that, just that unity that you guys have. Um, it's going to be, it's going to play a big role in us trying to win, win games. Um, nobody's a superstar. Nobody's bigger than the next man that puts on that Memphis jersey. When we put on a Memphis jersey, that's what we represent. And on the same token, while you may not have the individuals and you want to have the team-oriented goals, you still have to have leaders. And you are certainly one of the leaders of the team. You lead by example on the court and you lead vocally. Talk about having that position and now as a junior, as an upperclassman, being one of the leaders of this team. Um, I actually feel like this is going to be my first year actually being a leader. Um, I feel like I, I possessed the potential to, to be one earlier on, but it just felt weird. Like I wasn't, I wasn't in the mental place to, to accept the role. I wasn't in the place to be too, uh, too vocal. Um, mm -hmm. Certain situations where everyone else would be quiet and, and, and I stay quiet myself when really a leader would speak up and, and speak his mind and, and say what's right in that situation. And that's the role that I'm willing to take this year. That's something I wasn't willing to do previously because I feel like I wasn't ready for it. Adonis, you played a lot of four last year, but I think your natural position is three, which we expect you to go back to this year. Is that going to be the case? Are we going to see more of you at the three? Yeah, um, well, last year, um, 
coach said he needed a lot more production at the fourth spot, and uh, we were having trouble with the, um, playing against the teams that we were playing against. And uh, uh, coach put me into the lineup and he put me at the fourth spot, so I played the majority of my season in, in the fourth spot. And uh, me and coach talked about it. Uh, we got a, a great recruit, recruit Shaq Goodwin. Uh, mm -hmm. That's going to be his spot as a four, play, four spot player. And, uh, I get a chance to go back to the wing and play my natural position. All right, you brought up Shaq Goodwin. I want to bring up the new guys, Shaq and Damian Wilson and Jaron Johnson, the junior college transfer. Um, how quickly have these guys acc uh, got accoladed with you, and how is the chemistry with these, these new players, with the veterans that are back? They've been doing very well. They've come in and, 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 and been acceptive of, of what we're trying to do. They've mm -hmm. been accepting the, the, their role on our team. Um, a lot of freshmen may come in, especially if you have accolades behind you such as theirs, and say, well, I want to be the star. I want to be this. I want to be that. But they've come in, humbled themselves, and, and, and recognize that we all play a role on this team and that this, everyone on this team is just as talented as each other. We all we have a very talented roster, and they've accepted that. A lot of people have heard about Jaron Johnson. He's had some issues away from the court, but so far I've heard all great things about him uh, both on and off the court here since his arrival at the University of Memphis. What type of player is he? Uh, he's a, a work hard player, a workhorse. Um, he has a great work ethic. Um, he's also a great person to be around. I mean, we've been hanging out. Uh, a lot, and uh, he's been doing a great job on the court as well. Uh, he, he listens, he stays disciplined, and uh, he wants to work hard. He wants to accept the role that, that Coach uh, has brought him in to do. Tark, how deep is this team? I say, I always say we have two starting fives. Like, um, every scholarship player can go somewhere else, and I, I, I really believe we'll start on another program, in another program's um, um, basketball team. That's the way I think about it, our team. Last year, you're ranked to start the season. You go into the NCAA tournament, you hook up with St. Louis, you don't get the seed that many thought you should get, and you lose to a team that was a completely different style. You're going to come into this season highly ranked once again. You're more experienced, you're a junior, you're now a sophomore. We just talked about these new players. How far can this team go, and what should the fans expect from this team this upcoming season? Let's start with you, Tark. Um, this team can go as far as it wants to. Um, this team can go, we're, we're as talented as any team in the country and we have the team chemistry to put it, to put it all together. And um, expectations, I wouldn't even put a numerical expectation on this team, like a number of games or anything like that. Mm -hmm. They should expect a fun season. That's the way I put it. Look at us to have fun and just enjoy the accolades as they come. Adonis? The way I see it, I see it as um, one of those top four teams to be in Atlanta. I mean, we got a great team. Um, we, this is probably the most athletic team that Coach Passion is going to have um, since he's been coaching here at Memphis. Um, we got a lot of great recruits. We got a lot of great guys that's more experienced and uh, that's been playing the college game for a while now. And uh, we all been, been matured. Um, we've seen what it takes to get to, get to that, um, that next spot. But um, it's all about being um, more focused this year. and. Um, and that one team, one goal, and no ego. During media day, most of the guys said those words, national championship. It's easy to throw it out there, but you guys legitimately think, for a team that hasn't won a tournament game in the last couple of years, with what you've assembled, that it's a realistic goal. Yeah, I mean, we, we got all the pieces here. Like I said, this is probably going to be one of the best teams that Coach Passons have um, as far as being a coach. And, um, I mean, with the, so much talent on this team, you expect a, expect a lot from these guys because um, uh, of the work ethic and how hard people come into practice and work and want to um, listen and learn. So it's a lot of that's going to be expected out of, but out of us, but as well as um, as a team, we expect a lot from each other. Tark, Jimmy Williams came in later in the season last year. How helpful was he to you and how helpful is he to you as a big man? Um, it's obvious how helpful he was to me. Um, you can see the way the season went. Right. When he came in, um, he started putting in work with me, and my season turned around. My season started going, it started ascending. You know, it got better and better. And um, Coach Williams is just, he's stuck with me. Um, he's worked with me. I can be sometimes stubborn as a player, <laughs> as we all can. But he, he's, he's a great coach, and he knows what he's talking about. He has many years in the game. He's coached great, many great players, and he just knows the fundamentals to, to teach a player in order for him to um, fulfill his own potential. How much better do you think you are now than when you came in from, from Ridgeway? From in, oh man, much better, much better. And it's not, it's not necessarily even a physical. It's mentally, um, just your understanding of the game predicts how good you're going to be. 
Um, and, and I understand the game much better through his coaching and guidance, through a coach passion, his coaching and guidance, and, and through playing under guys that have, have been in the, in, the, um, in this program for a while, such as the Will Cummins, West, and I, you know people like that. They've taught me a lot, and so just understand the game much better. Adonis, if there is a deficiency on this team, if there's an area where you really need to get better, what area would that be? Um, for this team. I just say um, a lot more um, work ethic on this team. Um, it just takes uh, to separate yourself. It's, it's more time in the gym. It's, it's the extra things that you do by yourself. So as far as um, what we need to get better is probably the work ethic. Um, a lot of guys got to take this thing serious um, on and off the court. I mean, um, it's about coming back into the gym, putting in work at late nights or early mornings, and, and just always being disciplined and focused on the big picture. You had a heck of a player in Will Barton last year, who's now with the Portland Trailblazers. Was there almost too much dependency on him offensively? Although he was their big scorer, was there a lot of that? Let's see, Will's going to get us the points here. Well, we're dependent on, especially when you went out with the injury. Tarek, anything to that? Um, I would say we we have bad, we have weapons. We have we have arsenal of weapons. Um, every, every position is a weapon to score. Our main thing is defense anyway. Right. We stick defense. We play defense. We get out on a run once we get a steal or or you rebound. So, but as far as like in the half court setting, like I just said, we have weapons. And last year we did depend on them heavily for points, but we haven't lost anything because we've recruited other players in. And at the same time, we still have the same weapons we previously had. We just have to use them in a different way. Yeah, you talked about defense, how important it is. We know that Adonis comes into the college game as a very good defensive player. You are obviously a very good defensive player. You mentioned earlier Shaq Goodwin. The acquisition, the acquisition, bringing in this talented freshman from the Atlanta area, his size, his ability to rebound, how important will it be for the front line? Um, it'll be very important. Um, it's, a, it's a lot of help. Um, and a lot of people like to say I didn't, I haven't had any help um, this far in my college career. I actually think I think I have. I haven't, I haven't grabbed, grabbed every rebound and scored every point myself. I couldn't do it alone. Right. But at the same time, coming in with him, I guess I guess it's for a team morale. I guess if you hear people say, well, you're going to have more help, you guys are going to do better now, it's this, that, and the third, then you, I guess for a team morale, you start believing it in, in it some more. I know there's no thought of, of the Big East. There is from the fans, there is from a lot of other people, but you guys are worried about this season. Who knows what happens after next season for both you guys uh, as far as your careers are concerned. So right now you're in your final year of Conference USA. Last year you won the Conference USA tournament. As talented as you guys are, and I know it's, it's very tough to say you should win every single game, but you're going to be favored in every single game. What's it like to get up all the time for some of the competition, I won't name names, I won't put anybody down, but how tough is it when it's not the teams that is going to be on the schedule for Memphis in the Big East when you're playing the teams in Conference USA on a weekly basis? It's not tough at all. Um, to be honest with you, what you just said is, is what we believe. We expect to wake up every morning and win every game. Mm -hmm. With our team, with the talent that we have put together and, and, and the way that we're going to play together with the chemistry that we have, we're going to win games. And if we step out on the court and take care of business the way we need to, I don't think there's a team that can beat us. That's my personal opinion. People might disagree, so be it. If you're coming out every game and, and you are uh, you favor yourself to win, mm -hmm. and that is your mindset, and you're the one that has to go out there and predict the future, you're the one that has to go out there and play, then that's not pressure on yourself. That's an expectation of yourself. Adonis, what is Josh Pastor like? Because there's myths about Joshua. He's not a guy who cusses, and but he gets it, he gets into it, doesn't he, with you guys? I mean, he, he's, he's very verbal. So what's the real truth about Josh as a coach as opposed to the myths about him as a coach? Um, as far as towards me, I, I say he's a loyal guy. Uh, he's been number loyal ever since the recruiting process. And um, everything that he said has been true. Um, ever since I've got there, he told me I have to work for everything. And that's what I've been doing. So he's um, all about uh, respect. Um, and he's a, a great mentor uh, as far as on and off the court. He wants you to be a, a young man. He wants you to be a gentleman. He wants you to um, be respectful and obedient, and he wants you to follow directions. I mean, so uh, he's been more of a, a, a teacher as well as a coach, and uh, as far and it's also a father fig father figure for some of the guys on the team. So, I mean, he's he's been more than a coach. He's done outside things that's helped his team as well. He's very very loyal, as you said, but he is demanding, Tark, is he not? Um, yeah, Coach Parrish is very demanding. He has, he has his mind made up on the roles that you have to play within his program, and you have to play those roles. I know you guys are doing very well in school as individuals, as, as a team, and there's standards now with the NCAA. If you don't 
go to the classes and you don't put up the grades, you're not going to play. Connecticut's going through this, this upcoming season. Uh, how important is it to you guys to, to do well in school? Let me start with you, Adonis. It's, it's always been uh, about school ever since you started playing basketball. I mean, for myself, I couldn't play basketball without having good grades. So, and then and coming into high school, you can't go to the school you want to go to unless you make the certain grades on the ACT or in class. Or It's all about being a student athlete. That's why you're um, here at school, because you're um, in school and books, and then it's uh, also the scholarship that takes place takes place that allows you to play basketball. So, I mean, Coach Patterson wants us to be um, young men. Like I said, it's all about um, having a job and a career after basketball is done. You can't help but be impressed by you two and other players on this Memphis Tigers team. And Tark, I've known you since high school. Obviously, Adonis, the same deal. But um, I know it's very important to you. You're very articulate. Uh, you, you care about uh, going to class and getting good grades and you know, more power to you. Tell, tell us about uh, the same situation, the same question I asked uh, Adonis about the importance of, of academics. Yeah, it's very important. It's even more important than, than the NCAA makes it. Um, basketball is only a certain, a certain stint of our life. Um, it's only a certain stint of our career and what we're going to pursue. Um, we have um, bigger and better and broader minds within our, within our heads that, that, that have big dreams that are bigger than playing on the NBA floor. And so when that's done, and if you're even blessed enough to make it to the NBA, and when all when all that is said and done, you have to have something. A lot of people say you have to have something to fall back on. It's not to fall back on. Mm -hmm. It's something to further pursue, and um, that's the way I think about it. So yeah, education is very is very powerful, and plus knowledge never ends. Knowledge you always you mm -hmm. continue to learn to the day that you die. So I'm always going to want to become more knowledgeable and be more educated. Our final moments, a couple of quick things for you. Who's the the funniest guy on the team? Hmm. <laughs> You're already laughing. <laughs> Good. That's a funny question. Who is it? Who cracks you guys up the most? This guy right here is, is a classic. I, I call him a classic. I call him. He, I say he's classic because everything that comes out of his mouth is like a classic phrase or line, and you're gonna remember it. Like you're gonna be like, oh, you remember when Donna said this or Donna said that, but. I don't know. It, it could. Donis could be. We have a couple of contenders, though, because everybody, we have a lot of funny guys on the team. All right. Who's the most intense, Donis? Um, I'd probably have to say Joe Jackson. Mm -hmm. It's always, it seems like it's always a war with Joe. It's a battle. Like, it's always against him, him against the world. In some, he, in some situation, he always makes it. Joe Jackson, he got to overcome something. Does anybody have the good voice? Is there a the best singer on the team, best rapper? Is anybody really talented as far as music is concerned? Well, I was one that was in band for eight years. So, oh, really? Um, I yeah. won't put you on the spot here or anything like that. All right, no, I don't mind. I actually have it, <laughs> have it tattooed on me. Oh, look at that. This is my I, first I, love. I, I had no idea about that. Um, real quick, too, and it's only one year for you and a couple of years for you. Who's the best player in college you've gone up against? And, and you can't use a teammate here. Um, well, so far for me, uh, who was a great guy? Anybody stand out? I don't too much I didn't remember. I put you on the spot. I don't too much Sparks remember. or somebody? Um, it's a name that people only expect me to say. It's not even a big name person, but Gary Flowers that went to Southern Miss. Mm -hmm. um, I say that because a lot of people get the, he didn't have the accolades or politics behind him, but dude, that guy was very efficient. Like, Gary Flowers was scary. Every time he put up a shot, it was, it was destined to go in. I've seen, and on defense, he played good defense, and he can score in many different right, ways. Right. He was a post-up guy, a pop-out guy. It was very scary playing game. You know, I bet your name pops up for other teams if somebody asks them the question, who's the scariest? It's Tark Black. Tark, thank you so much. So, so much. All mine. Absolutely appreciate you being right. with me. Adonis as thank well, you. thank you appreciate so much. It. We'll take a break. Overtime is coming up next. In 2002, the old Pyramid Arena played host to arguably the biggest sporting event to ever grace the Bluff City, the Lennox Lewis-Mike Tyson World Heavyweight Championship fight. This year marks the 10th anniversary of that battle. 
At the time, it was the highest grossing event in pay-per-view history at just under $107 million. It also drew over 15,000 people, including stars from stage and screen and from all over the sports world. And while the production was a joint venture between HBO and Showtime, a relatively unknown company named Prize Fight Boxing was instrumental in securing the deal for Memphis. Recently, I spent some time with Brian Young, the president of Prize Fight Boxing and MMA, to reflect on that special time in Memphis sports history. So, Brian, how were you able to get this fight to Memphis? Well, it was an interesting journey. Um, I was in Nashville, and I was, I was promoting fights, and I was working at a fitness center and had two full-time jobs doing those two. And um, it, it reali I, I realized it came to me. Um, I think it was, uh, it was a blessing from God, actually, that, that uh, I, I had a vision that, that I could do the fight in Tennessee. I had uh, uh, deep contacts with the Tennessee Athletic Commission, having done a number of fights already in Tennessee. And... Um, I, I felt like I could raise the money, the $12.5 million to do it. And um, through a lot of hard work and preparation and behind the scenes work with the Tennessee Athletic Commission uh, Director Tommy Patrick and I, over about two weeks, along with my brother Russ, um, we, we came up with a plan. Uh, we were able, uh, with Mike Lampley, our funding partner uh, out of Nashville, to bring the fight to Nashville. And we were all set to do it there, Greg. And uh, uh, Bud Adams, who had, who had uh, brought the Titans, uh, the owner of the Titans, had brought them to Nashville and, and was kind of the favorite son of the city for bringing the Titans there. It was really all up to him if he would let us do it, if he would let us do it at the Titans Stadium or uh, if we could do it. Uh, at that time, it was the, the GEC, the Gaylord Entertainment mm -hmm. Center. And um, when Bud Adams turned against the fight, where he took about two or three days to decide and played it out in the media whether he was going to allow us to do the fight there in Nashville. And then he decided against it in the famous No Way Jose quote that he said that uh, he said, not only will the fight never happen in Tennessee, it won't happen anywhere. And so um, it, was a, it, was a, it was a depressing uh, day, probably the, the, the most challenging day of my entire life to have put all that work in. And then I think for him to have played it uh, into his favor and used it as a publicity stunt for him to look you know, um, like he was doing the city of, of Nashville a favor. It was, it was kind of split. It was half of the city, I think, was for Bud and understood his position, and the other half was for me and, and didn't understand why Bud, who the, didn't, didn't have a dollar in the stadium, it was publicly funded, but privately ran, where he received all the revenue for this, from, from what the, the events that came in, whether it be a concert, whether it be a football game, Titans game, he received all that money. His management company did. And so when he turned it down, um, I, I looked to Memphis, and Joe Towns, a state representative from Memphis, uh, had called me and said that, that Mayor Willie Harrington had, had wanted us to bring the fight. And uh, Alan had called me, my friend that ran the pyramid, said, hey, can you come down tonight? Um, we, we, want you to, we want you to come on down and, and, and do the fight. And, 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 of course, I called you and I said, Greg, I think we're close to landing this thing in Memphis. And, and um, you know, by God's grace, we were able to land the fight here in Memphis and bring it. And, uh, but it was, on, it was kind of a, a, about a two-and-a-half, three-week journey of getting the money together, making sure that Mike was able to be licensed in Tennessee. The only state that would license Mike in the United States was Tennessee. And that's why in this book by Scoop Malinowski, about the fight between Tyson and Lewis, they say Memphis or bust is one of the chapters. So it was either going to happen in Memphis or this fight wasn't going to happen. Yeah, that's true. Um, once we got the fight to Memphis and, 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 and once the story broke that I was going to bring the fight here to Memphis, uh, Don King started working behind the scenes because if you remember at that time, he was in a lawsuit with, with Tyson where Tyson had sued him for like $112 million in back pay that Tyson felt like he got shorted. So Don didn't want Mike to make the $25 million he was going to make against Lennox Lewis. So he worked behind the scenes to make sure that the fight didn't happen, calling the Tennessee Athletic Commission, calling the governor, Governor Sunquist, who was from Memphis, is a Memphis native, as you know, um, and, and Sunquist wouldn't hear about it. Um, Sunquist, uh, Governor Sunquist wanted the fight to, to happen here in Memphis, was determined that it was going to um, happen and, and, and helped me and helped our cause, and, and we were able to land it in Memphis. But Don, Don King and, and the former president of First Tennessee Bank uh, worked up until the 11th hour to make sure that that fight didn't happen here in Memphis. And um, um, the, the uh, president of First Tennessee Bank at the 11th hour uh, at 3.55, five minutes before the bank closed, uh, before all the First Tennessee branches closed on that Friday afternoon, 
denied my letter of credit and it was already in cash, the 12 and a half million. And he said it was because of a quote unquote morality issue that he had with the fight, which was, uh, you know, as we know, was just a lie. And uh, him and Don King were friends back when Don did the Kennedy McKinney fights here in, in Memphis. He got to be friends with, with, with that particular individual at First Tennessee Bank. And, and um, so I had, I had people throwing knives at me um, uh, all the way up until we were, were able to do it. So um, USA Today broke the story that it didn't come up, that Brian Young didn't, wasn't able to come up with the 12 and a half million and that the fight was in jeopardy in Memphis. So at any rate, we, I worked through the weekend, worked through that Monday. We were able to secure a bank that would take our, our cash would would take the letter of credit and um, and and let the bell ring. The fight was on. Well, certainly a lot of hoops you had to jump through and everybody in Memphis to get this event. They'll argue that it's the biggest event ever to come to Memphis. I think it's certainly the biggest sporting event that ever came to the Bluff City. Brian, always a pleasure. Thanks, Greg. Thank Brad, you man. so much. Appreciate and that'll do it for this week. Remember that you can catch any of our previous shows by going to the website and clicking on KO Tonight. See you next time.